video and better camera feed available on the ACC video portal. So with that, we will turn it over to Coach Sweeney. All right. Uh, thank you, Ross. Well, really proud of our, I'm looking at it, uh, really proud of our uh, team today. Uh, talked all week about, you know, just respect for the preparation process, uh, you know, regardless of who you play. That's kind of something we talk about all the time. We got a really young team, so we've got a lot of uh, reinstalling of just our culture and things that we believe in and things that have created a lot of consistency for us. And uh, good to see that maturity uh, today. Uh, the leadership, our guys' mindset was, I mean, they were ready to go. I mean, you, you would, doesn't matter who we play. It, it's about how we play and taking pride in that. And, uh, you know, offensively, man, just unbelievable uh, in the first half. Uh, 49 points. That's the most points we've scored since I've been the head coach in a half. And uh, just very crisp, good to see some balls down the field. You know, Amari uh, had a big finish on one, you know, and he, he didn't finish last week. Frank Ladson, same thing, had, had a drop for a touchdown last week. See him come back, had two touchdowns. Uh, you know, all the receivers made some plays and spread it out. I think Trevor was eight of nine, uh, three touchdowns, incredibly efficient and scored quick. Uh, so just really, really proud of, of, of what the offense looked like, uh, you know, with our first groups. And then Travis, you know, he was 8.5 a carry and 100 and something yards all purpose. We slipped him in there for a punt return, uh, showed what he can do there, something he's been working hard on. And uh, so wanted to get him a, a live rep. Uh, so really proud of that. And uh, again, did another really good job on third down. So just a very efficient day. Uh, saw some of our young guys step up a little bit. Good to see EJ uh, get going. Uh, you know, Joseph uh, tweaked a uh, ab muscle, so he wasn't able to quite, uh, you know, accelerate like he needed to. So we kind of held him uh, after a little while. But the biggest thing offensively is just, you know, uh, developing our depth, especially in that offensive line, and uh, not turning the ball over, you know, uh, continue to develop our quarterbacks, you know, because we've got to have everybody ready to go. Uh, so we're very fortunate that we've had the opportunity in these first two games to get a lot of guys on tape. Uh, now we have an open date, a chance to really teach and, and, and grow uh, our team. So excited about that. I thought our special teams were tremendous. Uh, kickoff coverage was excellent. Uh, we had big plays in the punt return game. That's been a big emphasis for us there. Uh, you know, no penalties. We're really, really proud of what we did there. Uh, Will Spires, uh, two games in a row, we really punted the ball well. Uh, he's flipped the field when we, when we needed him to. And, uh, you know, really, again, just, you know, made, a, made an impact in the game like, like we needed to from a special teams standpoint. But to me, defensively, uh, that was the story of the day. To, to, to hold those guys out of the end zone for four quarters is almost impossible. Uh, they, they create a lot of problem, problems, a lot of stress. Uh, you know, you have to be very disciplined when the, when, when our offense is scoring like that, now all of a sudden you start subbing guys because, you know, you, you, you just you have to sub. You're not going to get a guy hurt 49 to nothing. And so you start playing your backups, and, you know, you can get exposed pretty quick. But to see our backups go in and really play at a high level and continue to keep them out of the end zone, that really excites me about what I saw defensively. But, but overall, 2.7 a play, uh, again, against a team that, that can move the ball. I think they've been – I don't know, top 10 in rushing for the last several years. Uh, they do a great job you know, running the football. It's our first shutout since 2016. We've got some pretty good defenses around here. So uh, that's a great accomplishment. Had four sacks. Uh, you know, Miles Murphy with a big uh, calls fumble. Good to see Skowski scoop and score. Uh, so really uh, some good things. They were only three of 16 on third down. And, and again, uh, to see so many young guys go in and continue to play well, that's incredibly encouraging. But overall, just a very complete game, all three phases, complimentary football, uh, you know, did what we needed to do. So now it's open date. Uh, then we've got six consecutive conference games. Uh, so, you know, we'll, we'll get back to work on Monday and we'll continue to teach and develop our team. Uh, really appreciate our fans. Uh, it was awesome uh, to see so many people there and have such a wonderful atmosphere. I was telling the team, you know, this is the best game day environment uh in normal times and, and it's the best environment in pandemic times uh you know our, our fans were awesome and the event staff did an amazing job 
organizing, uh, you know, the, the seating and all that stuff. It was a great environment. Really appreciate all that went into uh, making it happen uh, so we could play football uh, in a safe manner. So, uh, again, a great day, a lot of fun uh, to be back in the Valley. and uh, Look forward to seeing everybody here uh, in, a, in a couple of weeks. We'll open it up for questions. Hey, Coach, Trevor Gross from CUTigers.com. I know Trevor Lawrence has had a, a lot of great games, but was that about as accurate as you've ever seen him? I mean, he was really dropping dimes out there. Yeah, I mean, and, he, and it was the same at Wake. You know, at Wake, we, we dropped two touchdown passes, you know, right in their hands, and uh, but he missed one throw. So I think he was 24 or 28 or something like that, and he, and he had two drops. He missed one, and then we had another one where the receiver fell down in the first series that would have been a completion. You know, otherwise, he's like 27 of 28 last week. So he's really playing uh, exactly the way he's practicing. What you're seeing on game day is, is, an, is exactly what we see at practice, just incredible focus, complete ownership of what we're doing, uh, great poise and discipline, great feel uh, for the defensive structures and the protections. Um, and uh, he's really throwing the ball with a lot of confidence. So uh, he's, as I've said many times, he's he's special. He's a joy to watch, and uh, you know it was it was uh, quick work for him today. Coach, this is Travis Bowen at AllClemson.com. Uh, what's your message to those younger guys that play half uh, after scoring forty nine points in the first half? What, what, what do you say? Can you repeat that? I'm sorry. Uh, just kind of message going forward to those guys that played in the second half as opposed to the guys who put up 49 in the first Yeah, the standard doesn't change. And, you know, we, we, we had two snaps on the ball. We had a couple third downs that we did not execute uh, well. We had guys there uh, who did not uh, either make the right uh, read or miss the throw uh, or didn't make the right protection. Had a couple of bad penalties. Uh, we had a couple of really good drives that stalled. Uh, we had a big turnover. Uh, so, you know, the standard doesn't change. You know, you got to be ready to go in and play and, and do the job. Uh, so, you know, they're all in the same meetings. They're all in the same practice field. So I think just uh, – uh, but, again, that's – we've got a lot of young guys, especially in that offensive line, uh, that the only way they're going to get better is to go play. And to, and to be able to coach them off of, off of, you know, real speed of the game type tape uh, that happens on, on, on game day. And uh, so it, it's going to help us. It's going to make us better. Uh, but, uh, you know, we've got a bunch of young talent. and You know, they'll, they'll continue to improve. And, you know, but it's good to be able to wholesale sub like that uh, because you, you get to see, you know, it's, you, you, can, you can slip guys in and out. And when you've got a bunch of veterans around them, you know, they, they can – kind of cover them up a little bit, if you will. But when you're a wholesale sub, and all of a sudden you got two or three guys that aren't quite, you know, on the same page, you, you can stall out. Uh, we had some really good drives. We just didn't finish. And, again, just, you know, whether it be uh, execution, snaps, penalties, drops, uh, that big drop. Uh, well, Tyson, I think it was Tyson, he threw a great ball, that big drop. So we just couldn't quite uh, just couldn't quite finish. So that'll be – that'll be uh, uh, a, a good tape for them to study from and, and a good challenge for them uh, to go get better moving forward. Coach, Coach Trevor, Trevor yeah. Yeah. Bob Gilchrist, WCRS, 1450 AM, 98.5 FM, Greenwood. Uh, I've asked this to the other players in the interviews. Uh, how are y'all going to use the bye week and how will you as a team prepare for games against Virginia and Miami and uh, how do you think the team did overall, especially on the offensive side? And how about the uh, putting the zero on the defensive side? I know you and Coach Venables had to be uh, very pleased with the performance by the defense. But how will y'all prepare for very two very big games uh, following the bye week? Yeah, well, we won't prepare any different than we prepared for the Citadel. Uh, <laughs> to be honest with you, we just do what we do. You know, we, we'll show up Monday ready. We have mental Monday. You know, we have a daily focus each day. Uh, the, the only difference is we do have a little extra time to get ready for Virginia, so we'll get a chance to see them play. Um, haven't seen them play yet, but I think they, I think they play Duke next weekend, so we'll get a chance to, to see them play a game. Um, but uh, we do what we do, you know, really no different. We'll practice on Monday. 
Uh, Tuesday's always been a community service type day, but we're not going to be able to do that uh, right now. So we're going to do a little bit more of a, a, a team oriented type uh, function. And then uh, we'll practice Wednesday. We'll practice Thursday. Uh, you know, they'll get Friday and Saturday off. We'll be back in here on Sunday for testing. And then it's game week again. And, and again, so the biggest difference is just a little extra time to prepare for Virginia. We won't, we won't, we're, we won't even think about Miami. Uh, we, we, we're one at a time around here, one day at a time, literally. So, uh, so but we'll take this extra time and, and again, really spend some time with our uh, developing our depth, correcting, teaching from the state. I think it's a great opportunity to be able to kind of go back over some things, slow some things back down. And, uh, but again, get a head start uh, on Virginia and, and a chance to watch them uh, next week. But as far as, you know, how we prepare, it's really uh, not any different. And yeah, we're, we're, you know, super happy about the, the big goose egg. Uh, you know, it's first time since 2016. So that's a big deal. Uh, it's hard to shut people out in today's uh, world of football. That is for sure. And especially when you're playing a, a team that stresses you, uh, you know, schematically like, like the Citadel can do. Uh, so really proud of our defense and our staff. Uh, that's a big deal for us. That's something we take a lot of pride in. Dabo, this is uh, Dabo. This is Larry Williams. Uh, with the with the defensive line, how much has the the competition up front sort of molded the the mentality of that group? Well, I mean, the the competition is is is. I mean, it's what makes everybody better. Uh, you know, we've got more depth, and and but it's but it's not just competition; it's the talent that's involved. It's very talented competition. Uh, so, you know, everybody, we got a bunch of good players. We got some guys that are a little further along than others. Uh, we got a couple of young guys that, that I'm really excited about, like Kate Park, like Trey Williams. Trey, Trey was out today. Hopefully, we'll get him back next week. Uh, he's a little banged up in the weight game. But, you know, those are two young guys we're really excited about. Uh, we didn't have Rook today. Rook's going to be out for a little while, uh, uh, you know, for, with an injury as well. Didn't have Tyler Davis today. Uh, so to see those guys go in there and, and take advantage of their opportunity, I mean, of course, Niles and Jordan, the, the elder statesman there, but, you know, Brzee is, I mean, he, you know, he's just a competitive guy. And you have to, you have to show up every day if you're going to compete with that guy. Uh, seeing Miles Murphy, that makes Maskell better. That makes KJ better. You know, we don't even have Xavier and Justin out there right now, but at some point we'll get those guys back and, so it's a uh, it's great, you know. Competition is is uh, what makes all of us better. Brings out the best in us. Coaches, Trevor again. Uh, Balen Spectre was your defensive MVP last week. He got banged up today. Is, is he concussion protocol? Uh, I don't know. I just know they held him out. Uh, not sure specifically what they're going, what, what his situation is. They just said they were going to hold him. Yeah, hey, this is Matt with the state. Um, I think. DK set a play to start the game. Is there anything you could share about that? And then um, what was your message to him after the unsportsmanlike conduct penalty? Uh, yeah, you know, just, you know, it can't happen, number one. But but uh, as far as, you know, he just didn't start the game. You know, he's, uh, you know, Mike's got Mike's got a lot of competition in his room, too. I mean, obviously, DK is as good a player as there is out there. And, you know, uh, I wouldn't call it discipline. I'd call it a little bit of love. You know, just loving him up. Uh, you know, I think I think discipline is the greatest form of love. And uh, Mike Mike does a great job with those guys. And you know, DK is a great kid. You know, but we want him to be accountable in every area. You know, academics, tutors, study hall, you name it, all of it. Uh, it all matters uh, to us. And uh, you know, so he's uh, he's got himself in a little bit of hole this summer, but he's he's dug himself out. And, uh, he's he's you know coming on, but again we've got to we, we, we can't uh, we can't have mistakes like that. Hey, Coach Lawton Swan, Clemson Sports Talk. Uh, you know how precious every moment is during this season. What does it say about Coach Thompson that down forty nine points? He said, "No, we want to play, you know, every second of this second half." Yeah, I loved it. Uh, you know, they came over and asked me, uh, and I said, "Well, you know, whatever, whatever he wants to do, you know, but." I'm glad that he wanted to play because we needed to play too. And obviously, it's not like we were going to, you know, uh, keep some of those guys out there. So I thought his guys played well, you know, in the second half and did some good things. But uh, all these kids want to play. They they want to play. Yeah, they worked hard. 
And uh, so I'm glad that, that it worked out. We were able to, to have a full game and again, uh, you know, get a lot of opportunity to, to teach because that's, that's what it's all about. That's how we're going to get these guys to improve, you know, is to be able to expose them and teach them off of the tape. Um, so we'll certainly have a lot of opportunity with this, but uh, really glad that uh, we were able to play all four quarters with the full 15 minutes. Dabo, this is Jane in Charleston. What would be uh, your primary concern, you know, going into a bye week right now about your squad? Uh, just COVID. Uh, you know, no, no. I mean, probably the same primary concern of every coach out there. Uh, we've done great. We've had no positives, I think, in, for a couple weeks now. And, and uh, you know, got a lot of testing going on. And, you know, you wake up this morning, it's 530 in the morning, you get that text and it's, hey, all negative, play ball, let's go. Uh, so that's probably the biggest thing is just guys continuing to do a great job. And they have. I mean, our students have, have been on the, around for a while now. And uh, so I'm really proud of them. So, you know, the football stuff, no real concerns there. Uh, I think that, that we've got a, a really good team. We've got a bunch of guys that care. Uh, we've got a great staff. And, uh, you know, we just got some, some young guys we've got to develop football-wise, but uh, uh, that's going to happen. That's what we do. Uh, but the biggest concern is just, you know, uh, you know hopefully everybody continuing to uh, be vigilant, keep their guard up, and, uh, you know, just keep their six-foot bubble everywhere they go. Uh, that's, that's probably the main thing. Coach, um, it's Trevor again. Blake Vinson had a couple bad snaps at center today. Um, I know you've been repping Hunter Rayburn a lot at center behind um, Cade Stewart. Uh, do you feel pretty comfortable in, in, in your backups at center? I do. You know, in Bacchorce, I don't know if y'all paid any attention, but Bacchorce played center uh, uh, as well in the uh, uh, weight game. So, you know, he's a guy that, that we've been getting some reps uh, at center in practice. He can go, Bach can go play center, no problem. Uh, Raber can play center. Trent Howard, feel good about him. He's, he's been working at center. And Blake can do it. He, he had two bad snaps today. Uh, but Blake's, Blake's missed a lot of football. Uh, but he's a very knowledgeable guy. And it's something he really wants to do. And he just not had many. He certainly had had hardly any. This is his first game reps at center you know, that he's getting. So he's just going to get better because uh, it's important to him. Like I said, he's a veteran guy that's been out for a long time, but just getting back uh, going. But uh, we've got some, we've got a good group there that can uh, get the job done for us. Coach Sweeney, Thomas Clark with Um For this game, especially when it came to kind of the decision to, you know, pull Trevor Lawrence midway through the first half, um, how did you kind of go about making that decision when it came to the quarterbacks and also just going, you know, with, you know, DJ with your other backups, how do you plan on kind of dividing up that playing time, you know, in future games? It just depends on how the game goes, but uh, it was 49 to nothing. And, uh, you know, uh, it was pretty much over. I mean, you know, no sense in, I don't see any need in trying to embarrass somebody. Uh, we want to we want to develop our team. And, yeah, I could keep Trevor out there and we could run up all kinds of stats and, you know, uh, but, you know, that's, that's the game. The game was under control, and uh, if Trevor Lawrence gets hurt, forty-nine to nothing. Uh, you know, then you're then the questions are: Why would you keep your quarterback in there when it's forty-nine to nothing? And first, you know, those are the you know. So I just been doing this long enough. Uh, I want to live for another day, and uh, I didn't need to see Trevor anymore. Uh, he he did everything he needed to do. He got he got the work he needed. Travis got the work he needed. That first group uh, got the work they needed, but. You know, that's a game-by-game game, uh, thing when it comes to, to playing time. But you know, the, the score of the game dictates all that stuff. D Dabo, when you put in uh, DJ there uh, was uh, after ETN's punt return, was that just a sort of a situational thing? You wanted to see how he performed on the short with the short field? No, no. We went into the game. Uh, we were going to put him in the fourth series regardless of whether the ball was on the plus one or the minus one. So – that's just the way it worked out, you know. Uh, he was going in no matter where the ball uh, was on the fourth series. That was our that was our plan, and uh, you know, good to see him going there and, and uh, got a chance to to get an end zone. Coach, this is Todd in Spartanburg. I'm wondering how you feel about where the bye week has fallen. 
Well, I didn't like it early. Uh, you know, when, when the schedule first came out, I mean, we played two games, but but I like it now uh, because we got some guys banged up that uh, hopefully we'll have a good chance to get back uh, for Virginia, or if not Virginia, you know, certainly Miami. Uh, so I, I, I like that part of it. And, uh, you know, so, and then we've had a chance to especially play so many guys these first two games it just gives us a little more time to uh, kind of go back. And, you know, since we don't have a normal week this week and, uh, and teach our team a little bit because, you know, it's, it's a, it's a little bit of a different approach this year when it comes to that. Uh, Cause we gotta have, we gotta have, everybody's gotta be ready. You just don't know. I mean, you just don't know. Same thing with your staff, you know? Uh, I mean, you know, we could all, we have to have a plan for everything. You know, I mean, I could wake up on Saturday morning and they tell me I'm out. Uh, so, you know, just, just, I think, uh, the way it's worked out from some of the injuries that we have, uh, I think, I think it's coming at a good time. So, and then we'll come back I think we play six straight. Uh, then we'll have another open date. Hopefully everything stays the same and, and then uh, have a strong finish. So it's, uh, it's good. It's good. I, I like I said, I didn't like it at the very beginning, uh, but I do now. Dabo, it's Grace with The Athletic. What is the biggest difference that you've seen in Frank Ladson in year two? Frank, just his confidence, his size. I mean, he's, he's completely transformed his body in, in a year. I mean, he doesn't even look – if you really go back and look at him when he first got here to where he is now physically, it's just night and day. I mean, he is really developed from a physical standpoint. He's incredibly fast, but he's playing fast. You know, he didn't always play fast – as a freshman learning, uh, he's playing fast now and, and uh, just more confidence. Coach, it's Trevor again. Um, I know you've used Travis on kick returns in the past, but how about that punt return by him today? Yeah, you know, it's something he's been working on really all fall camp um, and uh, kind of earning my trust a little bit. Uh, so I told him, I told him that I was going to slip him in there. Uh, you know, if we got the opportunity, I wanted to, wanted to get him a live rep. Uh, again, it's just another opportunity for him to touch it, but it starts with possessing the ball and making good decisions back there. And again, it's something he's worked on a good bit in camp. And, uh, you know, so he did a great job. I thought he was going to score. Uh, so that's a, that's a good option for us uh, moving forward to know that he can, you know, not only be a kick return guy, but, but a punt return guy uh, as well uh, if we need him. That'll, that puts a lot of pressure on people. Coach Sweeney, Rob Gilchrist again. Uh, how did it feel uh, for you and for Coach Venables to see both of your boys, all four of them, get stats today, get a little playing time? I know that had to, of course, hit home for you. Uh, what was going through your mind seeing both your boys play and for Coach Venables seeing both his boys play at the same time on the defensive side of the ball uh, late in the game today? No, it's fun. You know, I mean, it's, a, it's always fun to see those guys, you know, get opportunities to play. Uh, you know, I would say all four of them are the same. You know, they're, they're coaches' kids, uh, but they're all four unbelievably committed. You know, I mean, if you change their names, uh, those are four of the most committed guys we've had here. I mean, they are incredibly committed to the program, and, and they're all grinders. You know, they, they, they love to compete. Uh, you know, Will and Drew, they, they, they bust their butt every single day uh, to just be the best that they can be. And, um, you know, they really have improved. And then, uh, you know, Jake and, and Tyler are the same way. Tyler just getting here, he almost had an interception today. But, you know, those are two great players. Um, but, it's, but it's great. You know, again, uh, their names probably put a little more pressure on them. Uh, but but they, they are incredibly, uh, you know, committed uh, to just doing everything they can to uh, be the best that they can be. And, uh, you know, I'm really proud of them for that. But, a lot of fun to see those guys. Uh, I tell you, Jake's Jake's got a chance to be a really good player for us. And T Bone is T Bone is a versatile kid, man. He's, you know, as he continues to develop, there's a lot of things that he'll be able to do within the scheme of our defense over time. So, uh, but but it was great, great to see those guys, uh, you know, step up. You know, Will was a captain today, and you know, again, that just speaks to his leadership uh, in the locker room. We'll take two, three more for coach. Debo, with the unity thing at, at the end of the first quarter, just just how did that come about, and, and uh, what was it like being a part of it? 
Oh, it was great. It was something we talked about this summer. You know, I mean, I think that, um, you know, our guys, they, they want to, um, they want to unify, you know, uh, they really want to be that example, you know, and, and it's pretty cool to see a football team, 120 players that are all different. They don't all think the same. They don't all believe the same things. Uh, but yet there's a respect for each other and a love for each other, even though there's some differences. Um, and that's, that hopefully is an example to everyone uh, that, uh, you know, you, you, you can still be unified uh, and find common ground. And just because maybe somebody thinks different and you doesn't make them a bad person or an evil person, you know, you, know, you can disagree, but still love somebody and have respect for someone. And uh, so, you know, our guys are the epitome of that, to be honest with you. And it was a cool moment. It really was. I appreciated our fans. And that's really all that is, just a message of, and we just want to be together. You know, we just want to be together. Uh, you know, and it starts, it, it, it starts with, with all of us, you know, being that change, be the change that we want to see in other people. Um, and, uh, you know, showing kindness and respect and, and grace and forgiveness and, and, and tolerance uh, of other people that maybe don't think the, the way you do. And our guys, that's kind of the message that they had. Uh, so it was, uh, it was good. And, uh, you know, really proud of them. And uh, we've, got a, we've got a close football team that's uh, united and, uh, you know, ready to keep moving forward to try to be the best, uh, best team 125 we can be uh, you know, this season. We'll take one more for Coach. Hey, Dabo, Mark Whiteman from WYFF. Um, Coach Elliott mentioned on DJ's touchdowns, the push the offensive line was able to get. But what makes him so effective in those short yardage situations? And is that something we could see more of this year, independent of just Trevor, Trevor's backup? I don't know. I'd say anything's possible. But what makes him effective is he's 250 pounds. He's a big, strong man. Uh, but, uh, you know, anything's, anything's possible. Uh, that's for sure. All right, with that, we will wrap it up. Thank you, Coach.